All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Refill Studio. Uh, get your cans ready. We're going to refill to 99, as we always do on this podcast. And today, I have the honor and pleasure to welcome special guests, Sugatogu, to this uh, this uh, episode, uh, to the stage today. So, um, Tsu, uh, had just a brief intro for him, um, has gotten ninth place so a t10 title in the uh, title idol uh, pastel palettes band story 3 event as well as a very avid content creator um you can find him on twitch youtube and a lot of things for uh idol games and and idol culture so uh Tsu, um it is a great pleasure to have you on the studio today and uh welcome yeah, uh, th thank you so much, Phil, for, for inviting me on. Um, it's really great to be here. Awesome, awesome. Now, too, of course, is there anything else you'd like to add to that intro uh, that I gave you? Um, I think you uh, hit pretty much everything. Um, uh, most, um, I, I, I live and uh, breathe rhythm games, so kind of outside like uh, Bong Dream and, um, you know, uh, things like that. I also play a D4 DJ and mm. a lot of other like rhythm games as well, like arcade rhythm games. That's kind of like that's kind of where um, where I hang my hat, so to say. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, good, good. Well, again, it's great having you here on uh, today, too, and uh, just kind of start things off to uh, in this episode. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, uh, rhythm games are definitely like your area of, uh, you know, expertise. That's where you kind of do most of your content and, and that's what you enjoy the most. So uh, tell me, how did you first get into, you know, these rhythm games and also a little bit of how you got into specifically as well, like, all these like idol kind of related uh, franchises as well. You know, it's it's funny because um, I I guess my first exposure to like um, I, I guess to like mobile rhythm games uh, would be about the same time as I was exposed to like um, uh, idol um, culture as well. Because uh, my first uh, mobile game, my first like mobile rhythm game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, happened to be a uh, Love Live um, uh, School Idol Festival, and so I, I like really uh, got hooked onto playing that. I was like, oh, I, I, I found it. I'm like, oh, uh, this seems like a really uh, fun game with like these like you know these uh these like characters, and there's like a story about like mm -hmm. how they're going to be like um like an idol group, and yeah, it just kind of led me to discover like other other kind of kinds of rhythm games as well it also led me to discover uh, uh to discover bong dream as well and I, I couldn't be happier for that i was like yeah and that's that's kind of how i um fell down the I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, you know? What what kind of? And again, for a lot of our guests, uh, Love Live was definitely de one of the, the stepping points of you know eventually getting to Bang Dream. But for you, what kind of um, enticed you the most about you know the the idol culture? Like what what about Love Live and like idol culture? What really kind of uh, inspired you that this is something that you want to follow and and continue to to enjoy? Do, do you recall or? Um, I I think one of the things that kind of like set me off uh t to my path of just like being like a like a content creator is just kind of uh sharing my love for like uh these games and mm -hmm. idol culture as a whole and it just seems like to the outside um like um just like from an outsider looking in um idol culture can seem like very like unapproachable and like esoteric and it's like it has its own like um its own little little quirks and it's um it's kind of um intimidating to um get into all at once and so um i like to approach these um i i'd like to approach um decidal culture and games with like uh the beginner in mind kind of um kind of like um i i like to like introduce them and kind of um uh show why um why i love them so much mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's a it's a very unique sort of culture, you know, trying to uh, stand in front of the the Oshis and you know truly really enjoy like what you what, like what the the performances are and what the idols do. But you know, it's definitely very inspiring in a sense. And um, of course, uh, your your love for Love Live sort of really helped uh, transpire eventually to getting into other franchises. Right, specifically, like a lot of Mushu Road stuff. So, uh, Bang Dream, of course, we mentioned earlier. You mentioned D Four DJ as well. Uh, specifically, with Bang Dream, do you recall how did you get into to Bang Dream? Like, do you remember like where, when you first heard about it and, and how you got into it? I first remember getting into it um, uh, on recommendation of a friend who um, who also played Bang Dream and noticed mm-hmm. that I played a lot of. Um, school idol festival mm-hmm. and they they go hey you should you should check out this game because uh, it's like a lot like a uh, love live um except there's like a, a band component too because as you know uh bong dream is all about um you know uh it, it's all about you know um creating a band and playing music as as a band um mm-hmm. and i thought that was really interesting because it's like oh um i i um that appealed to me because um i don't know if anyone else i I say this being um i I say this like being like oh i don't know if anyone's heard this but um i grew up um uh watching specifically uh Mm k-on and i really really enjoyed k-on and so uh um that really um that what that's really what drew me in because Kaon was also about a group of uh, girls starting their own band and and it's like oh now here's this here's this whole game where you have not only just um one group um uh performing as a as a band but you have like several um you have like several groups of like several um people like starting starting a band and that's like oh my gosh that's amazing mm-hmm Definitely, and as you can see in the in the in the uh, studio lounge, a couple of people agreeing with that as well. Like K on, you know, K on being a a pretty good uh, anime to watch, and a little and a bit of an inspiration for Bang Dream. So seeing Bang Dream like come out and be very similar to to K on, and see that development is is really neat. And again, another reason why many uh, people ended up getting to the the series just like you two. Um, when when you first got into ba- Bandery, like. Was there a, a particular character or band that immediately stuck out to you? And, you know, did that favorite change as time went? Or was it, like, still the same from, from day one? Well, um, obviously, me being an Idol fan, the, the the group that stuck out to me, the or, yeah, the group in uh, Bong Dream that stuck out to me the most was obviously uh, Pastel Palettes. Mm. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> um... <laughs> And like the character in particular that that I I you know I identify a lot with um, is Aya because you know she she's um she's working hard she's um um she tries her best um she might be a little bit of a of a crybaby at times but um she knows um not to give up and I think that's um that's what I you know that's what I identify with um just um just um persevering uh, not giving up despite just being yeah just just um just like giving it all you have and just having your um your uh band members support you along the way well well, that's really cool to hear that basically you're you're like a pastel palettes fan from like day one that you started right immediately stuck down you knew that this is (laughs) the the band for you some people right as they learn through through other bands they may change but you you kind of stuck with pastel palettes uh, right, right from the start. So yeah, that's very, very cool to hear. And of course, we'll eventually hear your, you know, how you showed your devotion for uh, Pasta Palettes later uh, when we talk about your tiering. But uh, before we do that, um, you know, is, are there any other rhythm games right now that you, you know, you played a lot, like the most to right now? Is you know, is is Bandari still your go-to? Maybe there's other games like maybe Love Live, maybe D Four D J, or maybe even something else. Uh, it, what, what's what's caught your, uh, you know, what's caught your main interest right now? Um, I, I still play, uh, Bong Dream every now and then. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I really do enjoy it as a rhythm game. Um, Mm -hmm. I also switch, uh, back and forth between, um, D4DJ, uh, Groovy Mix and, um, also, uh, Project Sekai, especially Mm -hmm. now that the, the, the game is getting like a, 
like a worldwide release and mm. um i also um I, I also really like um arcade rhythm games the the one that i i like the most is called um it's 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 kind of um weird sounding it's called sound voltex mm-hmm. and it's like this uh yeah it's like this game with like you have like these like four big buttons and you have these two smaller buttons and then you have these like two other knobs too on the left and the right side and it's like it's i really like enjoy that it's like you're not just like hitting buttons but you're also like uh turning uh things and that's also affecting the music as well that's that's something that i really i really like um i had like a i had like a small like little um stint in kind of like uh learning music production and that's uh Mm. yeah that that's what drew me in and also i really do kind of um enjoy the um I, I do enjoy the idea of just like kind of like mixing and, and DJing too, which I guess is why I also enjoy enjoy D4 DJ as well. Oh, well that's that's very neat to hear. Like that's something that I uh, you know never never thought about, but it's good to hear that you had some you know some music production, a little little bit of background there. That's really neat for sure. Um, and like when, when you in South Voltex, is there like a local arcade that you like occasionally just go and grind and you know just play the game uh, a bit? Is that sort of how how you indulge yourself? <laughs> yeah, um, every so often I go to uh, um, I go to this um arcade, this like kind of arcade chain called Round One, mm-hmm. and that that um that arcade chain has like all these um all these sorts of like different um unique uh uh arcade games that you can only play there that um you know that they bring straight from japan and they actually mm-hmm. have um it's so interesting because they have that and uh if you ever played like a group coaster like on like mm-hmm. the switch or something they have like the big arcade version of that and wow. it's like really interesting it's got like this um instead of like tapping the buttons and like um having like the 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 joysticks it's got like this big controller and you're like um you're like uh, tapping these like big like buttons and it's like it's such a different experience and um mm. oh there's also the um if anyone's played uh uh hatsune miku project diva mm-hmm. there's an arcade version of hatsune miku uh project diva and that's that's really interesting too and and just also too the unique control it's like the unique control scheme for that too it's like instead of like you know uh using like the dual shock controller you have these giant oversized buttons and you have like this thing that you like swipe um this like uh touch sensitive area that you swipe back and forth and it's just it's so it's so unique just playing like all these games that you know all these games that um maybe people have played before but in like a totally different setting so yeah that's 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 really cool um sometimes um uh going back to sound voltex that's probably like um sometimes um i go to round one solely to play that game and uh, grind (laughs) like you said i just really love it and i i really want to get better at it that's that's awesome to hear uh too uh maybe next time i'll I'll see if uh, if i'm somehow around the area that's something I'll, i'll check out for sure uh you know in my area uh, we have a, a local place called East Spot, and it's a little bit on the smaller side, but there are some rhythm games as well. I have to ask um, uh, one of our, our previous guests, White Whale. Um, he goes there pretty often, so I'm not sure. I think we have Sound Voltex. I definitely know we have a hot name, uh, Miku uh, Project Diva, um, sort of arcade game there. Uh, one of, the, I guess, the main selling points is we have the Mai Mai Machines. Um, so oh, that's, that's super fun. I'm so bad at it though, <laughs> because I never grew up playing love live. So circular sort of rhythm games just never really clicked with me. So, um, yeah, so, so that was, uh, but that's, it, it's a lot of fun for sure. I, I do, I do agree that, um, you know, arcade gaming, uh, playing rhythm games in particular is, is, is definitely a lot of fun. So yeah, that's, that's definitely great, great to hear. So so we'll move on to talk a little briefly about what you mentioned earlier in um, in the beginning of this episode, which is the fact that you started to do content creation for your love of the Idol franchise. In particular, you wanted to approach it in like, you know, sort of like a, a beginner mode fashion where you're trying to introduce people into the games and into the series, depending on what game you sort of showcase. But 
maybe share a little bit more about what what sort of inspired you to to do that like what first convinced you that you know you wanted to do content creation like did you start off as a you know someone making videos on youtube or did you start off as a streamer where did this all start um so i definitely do want to say that i I kind of started making um I, i started like putting up um i started on youtube i started like putting up like uh just like you know, just like gameplay videos of just like me like playing like uh mm. rhythm games. And then as like um as streaming took off, like just like just like um you know, as these like uh different like uh like streaming um websites took off, like uh Twitch and uh everything like that, I, I kind of figured, oh, that's uh that's kind of where I wanted to go. Um I I I I kind of like the idea of just like not me being alone, just like playing these like games and just like putting it somewhere. It would be nice to have like just like a place for me to play these games and kind of like enjoy what I enjoy what I do, but then also Mm -hmm. um, have other people um, watch as well. And if they have any questions, um, I can I I can uh, answer I can answer them in real time. You know, uh, for YouTube, it's like, especially like early YouTube, it's got um, the only kind of feedback that you had at the beginning was just like the comment system. And it's like Mm -hmm. you have to like go and you have to go and uh, check. um, Gosh, YouTube, um, when I was started using it, it was such a like a very different place than uh, what it is now. It's like Mm -hmm. it um, it's it's it's. it's not as user friendly to just go in and just see the most recent comments. I remember having to like check back on like the actual video page and like look at every comment and there was no like reply feature either. So it's like, Mm. you have to just like leave a comment and hope that you, um, the person like commenting below you kind of understood that, Oh, um, Oh, uh, you're replying to me on this. So, okay. Mm. Yeah. So, um, it's I, I really um that's when I started um thinking about oh uh, maybe I should just uh try streaming, see how I like that. Yeah, um uh it's it's so funny because my my first couple of streams uh were uh Bong Dream related and uh, mm. people really seem to like enjoy that, especially since um uh Bong Dream started getting getting popular, especially with its like worldwide release and more people um more people wanting to get into that and it was like um they want to they want to like see and kind of understand what what it's about and it's like oh um i want to do i want to do that i want to um i i want to just play this game and i want to just answer questions and just have fun with it mm. and yeah that's uh that that's where that's where everything began with my uh, mm. content creation journey Okay. So again, just, again, just, that's a really cool story to hear too. And just based on what you've mentioned, right. It seemed like a lot of the things that you really like to do was just the interaction component, right. It's just, you know, you want to interact with people, make sure you're able to help them and assist them and guide them through, you know, this, this, uh, uh, I guess this uh, interest in in idol culture and, and specifically the games that you play. So I imagine that you know as as streaming took off and you really did the the streaming and you started streaming that this was like you know your 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 preferred method of uh, of of making content and this was something that you 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 quite enjoyed quite a bit, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. I really really did um, enjoy it. Um, I, I I say that like I. <laughs> Um, well, like my first couple of streams, I really kind of enjoyed what I Mm -hmm. did. And I, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I noticed that, you know, some people would like, uh, come back and they would go, oh, um, you know, they, they would, they would return for like, uh, later streams. And it's like, oh, that's, that's really, that's really Mm -hmm. neat. And so I was like, I, 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 I kind of want to turn this into something else i, I kind of want to like make like a whole community about like mm-hmm. you know people like sharing their love with like uh, rhythm games and idol culture and things like that and it's like it's uh yeah it's uh, i i really i i really feel grateful to have like uh have like this like 
community of people that um like-minded people that all like you know play the same games and they can share like strategies and score posting and stuff like that and it's it's really nice Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just gonna, uh, I guess, lead into the fact that, you know, I, I imagine when you first started streaming, maybe after your first stream, you didn't think that, you know, you were able to maybe create what eventually became, you know, the two crew, and then like the Maho community, which is, of course, your server. Like, I imagine that wasn't like maybe in, in, in any close anywhere close to the thought of your mind. And, you know, after your first stream, but you know, look where you are now, right? The, the community you've grown. Um, and you know, you have you built that? Like, so h- h- how did that feel? Like when you're, you know, you eventually started building that community. You see these people that you mentioned that you're, you know, returning to to watch the streams, and then they're they're forming this community. H- how how was that overall feeling of being able to build that? Um, it felt really nice because um, it, it felt really nice that um other people kind of had the same interests that I had because before. Um, I really thought that, um, you know, just like kind of like uh, my 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 interests were kind of like kind of like out there. Like mm-hmm. I wasn't really like the kind of person that, you know, um, I how do I say this? Um, I, I wasn't really into kind of like um, I, like kind of like popular games at the time, I, I, gu- I guess. I guess what I'm trying to say is like um everyone, you know, it's like oh, you know, everyone's kind of into like oh, what what what's the latest game for like the the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox and I didn't I didn't really like I didn't really enjoy like kind of those games. I just mm-hmm. kind of like stuck to rhythm games because that's that's what I was best at. And uh mm-hmm. yeah, I thought I was just kind of like all alone and just kind of being like, oh, I guess this is kind of like my thing, but um just discovering like um uh, other people that enjoy this and discovering uh discovering um like the community that had uh grown around me and then like discovering like other um other communities that that just play the same game too mm-hmm. and it's like oh wow that's that that's amazing and it's it, it kind of like um i guess it kind of like uh opened up this uh this like whole world this like whole world that was like always there but i didn't really know it was there until like i started taking that like first step into like uh streaming and uh community building so that Mm. that i can say that um the um just like you know finding my community and just like um networking with everyone uh from streaming has been a really really great experience and i wouldn't and i do not regret it i would like do it all over again wow well that is awesome to hear it's amazing and thank you for sharing such a you know a a memorable moment in your your content creation life it's i'm sure it's a you know a great memory to have and you know i i do agree with that sentiment that you just shared right you know as as a content creator you really don't know what's really out there until you actually do something right you make the content you see what goes on and you notice that wow there's people out there that actually have common interests even as niches you know rhythm games or even specifically idol rhythm games you don't know that that many people are out there until you know you you make the content people reach out you interact and and then that's where you know these communities form and you really get to learn from other people and it's really neat to see i i do definitely agree with that that's also you know one thing that i i do enjoy about content creation myself um as well again just being able to uh you know share a voice and be able to have it heard by other people and other people actually you know have with common interest being able to, to come in and and interact so i definitely uh definitely agree with that uh, you know i i never thought myself when i did content creation that i would be building a community you know i would have uh, such a following on, on on twitch and youtube i'm sure it's the same for you and you know and making a podcast for you know all this stuff either like i never thought of that maybe like you know two years ago when i first started this so um yeah i imagine maybe you were you were kind of surprised about the the, the numbers you grew as well you know in, on twitch and, and youtube uh it's a you know, quite a big surprise for you too oh yeah De- definitely i i had no idea that like um like starting out on on twitch kind of like um my uh the streams where i would gather the most amount of like just like pe- uh people watching would definitely be uh the mm-hmm. my uh bong dream streams because um you know everyone was just like interested in like there were like there were um once in a while i would like kind of get like um uh people um 
just like people just like coming in and just like uh just like going oh um i i've never seen this before but i i do i do like this and i i'd like to stick around to just kind of um um just kind of see what this is about and um i think that's kind of like the best feeling about like streaming is like i mean uh um I mean, sure. I, I do. I do like that. I have like regulars in my stream, like just like the Sioux crew that 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 come and they they watch and they um already um kind of have a feeling. Um, they they kind of have a a feeling and already like an like an already established appreciation uh for like the like uh Bong Dream and other games. But it's like especially um gratifying whenever I can whenever um someone comes in. And they kind of like watch this, and they've never seen this before, and they go, "Oh, um, I'm this. This this seems like a fun game, and I really like the characters, and I really like the story. I'm going to go download it and check it out." And it's like, "Wow, I, I'm getting. I, it's it's like it's so interesting, just like um, uh, bringing more people um uh, into the community because of because of um these streams, because of like um because of me, just like um." creating this uh this content that um you know that aims to be um that aims mm -hmm. to just like bring people into like um yeah just just to bring people into the community yeah for sure for sure so again for for you too it's a uh, i just want to you know give yourself give yourself a, a pat on the back for your accomplishments on on your content creation so far again um, you know, you're, you're close to, I believe it was close to 500 followers on Twitch. You have over 500 uh, subscribers on YouTube. So, you know, hopefully keep it up. I know you have been a little bit on a, a hiatus for now uh, in terms of, you know, content creation. But are there any plans or future plans on your, your content creation on, on when that will, uh, you know, kind of resume and, and, and such? Or is that something you're still kind of uh, waiting and seeing for the time being? Um, I do have, um, I do have future plans of, of just like continuing to, um, continuing to stream, especially, um, because, you know, um, there have just been some like outside, um, things just going on in, in, in my personal life that have mm -hmm. kind of, uh, prevented me from, uh, doing the things that I love, which is, you know, I, I really like, um, <laughs> I really like streaming and I really like, uh, talking to, um, my community mm -hmm. and, uh, and like doing events and stuff like that. And, um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, I, um, I really want to, um, I really want to return. Um, I, uh, as far as, uh, when, um, I don't really have a set date for that, mm -hmm. but um, I definitely, I definitely um, don't want to leave uh, anyone behind, and mm -hmm. uh, I'll definitely let um, let um, everyone know when I'll be uh, back and uh, creating content regularly. So, looking forward yeah. to it. Well, we look forward to your return soon, Sue. I'm sure again the the Maho community, the the two crew, they'll all they'll be very uh, you know patient and awaiting your, your return soon. So again, uh, hopefully everything goes well on your end and everything will work out, and we'll we'll see you uh, very soon and uh, back in, in content creation, doing what you love to do. So uh, all the best there. Hey everyone, it's Phil here. Hope you enjoyed the episode so far. As a reminder, the Refill Studio podcast is available on all of your favorite platforms. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and make sure to give that high rating or the thumbs up whenever you do, because helping the podcast increase its reach to other viewers is greatly appreciated. In terms of other content, check out my VODs channel, uh, the card description above. Consider subscribing to check out other content. And also, if you want to be a part of the content, Join the Anga Academy Discord server, link in the description below, where you can contribute to the studio question every week and interact with special guests featured on the podcast. So looking forward to seeing you there. Last but certainly not least, a big shout out to all of my Filler Nation members who've been constantly supporting me in my content. I really appreciate each and every one of you and you get shout outs on pretty much every podcast episode. So thank you so much for your support. If you really like my content and would like to support me, join the Filler Nation by either subscribing to my Twitch channel or by joining my Patreon. Links in the description below. There's also a new feature. You can give a super thanks uh, through you, my YouTube, so you can do that as well. Uh, any support is greatly appreciated. Let's get back to the episode.
in terms of content creation, one part of your your really, I guess, interesting content creation career was um, was the fact that you streamed a tiering um, sort of attempt. Um, in particular, um, your ninth place finish in Title Idol in, in Past the Palace Band Story 3. So maybe, you know, kind of uh, change the mood a bit. Uh, kind of let's recollect uh, some some of your memories from that really fun um, event for you when it comes to not only cheering, but also, you know, doing it for, um, you know, your stream as well. So uh, before we talk about your tiering, talk about where did it all start? Like, when did you first decide, like, tiering was something that you wanted to do? And why specifically, I mean, this could, this is probably an easy question to answer, but why specifically, uh, title idol? Um, I, I, I want to say that, um, you know, um, it's funny because I, um, just, um, playing, um, just like, uh, playing the, uh, I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a little, um. I, I'm, I'm a little tongue-tied because I <laughs> no worries, of, I've, no worries. I have a lot of things I want to say, um, but yeah, um, I, I, you know, I do enjoy kind of like the rhythm game component of a uh, of a uh, bone dream, and um, I noticed that there, you know, um, you know, uh, as a uh, most people know, uh, bone dream. It's not just about the rhythm game. Well, it, there is a rhythm game component, but mm -hmm. there are also um, there are also um, events going on um, every so often with like a ranking and like a leaderboards and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, based on event points. And it's like, oh, there's this um, there's this whole other aspect to this game, and it's like I want to try that. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's it's so interesting kind of like discovering uh, that part of the community too, because, you know, there's like uh, the community that, that there's like that, there's just like the, like the surface level of the community, I would like to say that mm. like um, likes the game and likes to play it. But then there's this other side to the community that is just um, uh, dedicated to um, getting like the top uh the top ranks in this leaderboard and like little did i know that there would be like um there, there's like um there's like dedicated uh communities and dedicated servers with their like you know that would help um that would help each other kind of like uh uh reach um that would help um that would assist others in kind of reaching their um their tiering goals and i was like oh I, I I I kind of like to do that, mm -hmm. um, especially for um, uh, especially for for title idol. Um, um, I I started um, like kind of like discovering like the 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 title idol event in itself. I mm -hmm. I discovered it um when the event was running um on the on the JP server first, because, uh, mm -hmm. as you know, that there's a, uh, there's a little bit of a delay, um, from when events, uh, run in JP to when they start happening on like the worldwide server. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, you know what, that's the one that I was going to do. That's, that's the one that I wanted to, to, to do because it's like, I, I, um, this kind of means a lot to me just mm -hmm. kind of like, um, getting my name on this on this um on this uh leaderboard and these rankings and just like you know um cooperating with others to you know uh to to make their to to make their uh their goals too and it's like oh gosh that's 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 amazing mm -hmm. so yeah that that that's that's what that's why i wanted to um that's why i decided that um uh title idol Ben story three would be like my um uh the cheering um the cheering um attempt that i wanted to do on stream mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so uh, you know uh, your approach to the uh, you know the, to tearing this event is definitely very different right you mentioned about like the community you kind of know it on, on the surface level and like the tearing community what ended up happening in the end too was you kind of did this all uh on your own and in a sense on your own not necessarily like on your own on your own because you had of course people from your community um to support you throughout the journey but you know on your own in a sense that you weren't really like in 
a, a sort of tiering server uh, in particular, right? You were just kind of playing at your own pace, playing on stream and playing as much as you can. So, you know, what did you do any like special preparations prior to the event or was it just kind of like, you know, on the spot, you kind of like do a little bit of uh, you kind of figured out a strategy and how you were going to tier this event? Um, at first, I really didn't know. Um, well, I, I kind of knew like the, the, the kind of like the general like gist of how to um, how to 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 rank well um but i didn't really i i I had no clue about um just kind of like certain things uh you have to keep in mind when when you're doing such a such a uh such a long um event like this oh my goodness um uh, speaking (laughs) speaking of (laughs) i also didn't know that um uh for the worldwide server um this would be a uh this event would go on as long as it did. I believe it went on for, gosh, how many days? Like it was about or thirteen ta- days. It was a little okay. less than two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of yeah. brutal. Well, uh, you know, to be add a bit of context, right? There was some delays to when Tidal Ida was being uh, released because of various issues with their or the updated version of the game and some Android issues as well. And then you know they needed more time to resolve the issue, so they super extended Tidal Idol, much to your, uh, I guess, suffering. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it obviously did not help that um, at around the same time as uh, the Tidal Idol event was taking place on the mm-hmm. worldwide server, I was actually attending a convention at the time. Um, oh, I was attending oh, uh, Anime Los Angeles in uh, in Long Beach. And so, oh my goodness. And it's like, uh, now I had to switch up my strategy because... I wouldn't get the opportunity to um, play as often as I would like. I would have mm. to like figure out ways to like. <laughs> I would have to figure out ways to tier while I was uh, like just like um, when I was just like not at the convention when I was like at my um, at my uh, at like the Airbnb with like uh, me and my like um, my my whole like uh, group that was also going to ALA and mm. I I. Uh, it was, it's so funny because I also, um, I also ended up just like bringing my iPad to ALA. Um, just like when I had some downtime, I would just like sit down and, and, and like ask, uh, <laughs> ask, uh, members of my, uh, community and go like, uh, Hey, uh, is anyone free to, t- is anyone, uh, free to like, uh, fill a room right now? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that that that's some dedication, right? Again, the fact that there's so many things against you, there was like a, it was a, such a long event schedule, kind of shifts here and there, and you were attending a convention of all things, but you kind of made time to, to make it work. And you know, I think the the most I think the most unique part about your tiering experience is, as you mentioned, you streamed it, right? So you you know you kind of dedicated yourself to get your setup out to like interact with people while you're tiering at the same time um and you know also like have people work together and that so so overall like what was your kind of thought process of you know streaming your your tiering and and how did you feel overall when when, when you did stream it um it, it felt really it, it felt really interesting um because um i had a lot of um as I was uh, streaming, I, I found a lot of, um, or I saw that um, a lot of people that were also like um, cheering as well, kind of mm. like joining, because um, I, because <laughs> I, I put my um, uh, on a bong dream on your profile, you can like put like a comment, and I put mm. like my uh, my uh, my uh, Twitch TV slash Suketogu is like my comment, and then people would like people who were cheering who could see like uh who could like see my 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 place on the rankings could like look at my profile and go oh wait this th- uh this person has a twitch channel and then they would come in and they would mm. they would go like oh uh you're you're streaming a tearing that <laughs> you're streaming a tearing attempt that's that's really that's really interesting mm. um it's um 
it's so funny because um I don't remember who said this. Uh, <laughs> uh, I remember um, getting getting a comment back and like, "This is really, this is really bold of you. This is really bold of um, you to like basically s- stream like a top ten snipe." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I did. I, I was like, uh, I didn't really mean to. It's like I, I really, I, I, I just had a goal and I wanted to to do this, and I, I mm-hmm. didn't know that I, <laughs> I didn't really intend on ruining anyone else's like, um, anyone else's like, uh, uh, T10 attempt either. Mm-hmm. I just kind of like, yeah, I just thought that this would be something that would be like, uh, really fun, just like kind of like, kind of like going through this event, kind of like streaming it as I went, and mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, again, you know, again, ultimately at the end of the day, right, going for a T10 and you're, you're going to have competition, right? You're not necessarily, you know, if, if more than, you know, six people want to go for a T10, right? Or seven people, right? There's seven spots. I uh, want to go for a T10, right? It's not necessarily ruining people's experience. It's just whoever made the best player win um, and getting that a title. And, you know, too, I think for a lot of people, when they saw that stream, your streaming attempt on, 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 on tiering, they thought it was really like you know it's really neat it's fascinating to see that someone would want to you know share that tiering experience with other people and you know of course you know we would uh, in the tiering server i definitely noticed that people would like lurk in your stream they're they, you know they're kind of cheering you on as well but you can also you know you get some information about how you're doing and you know how how hard they're working and and definitely you know appreciated how how hard you worked for that because you know it's definitely not easy um, to like, you know, focus on streaming, not necessarily be in like a, a tiering server, but still getting the goal that you needed. So um, it's honestly a really big accomplishment for you two to get that achievement in, in Title Idol. Uh, do you remember on average how many hours you played every day um, to like get that T10? Uh, every day on average? Ooh, I... Mm... I would want to say maybe um, uh, maybe I, I would I, I would want to say maybe <laughs> this, this, this is gonna sound this is gonna sound weird because like I I, I, I I do remember spending every basically every waking moment that I had like just mm. Just, just tearing, especially mm-hmm. since I, I knew I had an uphill uh, battle, especially since, or not an uphill battle, rather, but I had, I had like this mountain in front of me, and I had mm-hmm. like all these dedicated, like um, these like groups from dedicated tearing servers also uh, vying for a top ten attempt, and I knew that if I wasn't going to be part of those um server or those servers um if it was just going to be me and my community i knew that i had to play a lot more often and so i want to say that i played for maybe like 10 to 12 hours on average mm. um per day i remember um i remember especially um um playing kind of um through the night too. <laughs> yeah uh, because it's like you know it, it's funny because it's like uh you know it's like it's like that thing with, like tearing it's like you um like people that are, are t- uh people like play for like a long time and they don't get a whole lot of uh sleep just because they are just they're just uh they're just uh playing and playing and playing mm-hmm. and um and kind of like the fear of being um the the fear of being um you know of losing a rank or, or being um voted out of uh t10 entirely mm. especially it was a <laughs> that was a uh, that was kind of uh motivated motivating me to like uh keep playing i do remember too that there was also um there was also a person on their own um who was um getting really close to me mm. uh because i i remember um I remember, um, I think I was at, I, I was like, I was like already in T10, uh, but there was, um, there was another person that was like T11. And I noticed that, that, um, whenever I would be like asleep, they would like, uh, widen the gap because they're, um, because I, I had learned that they were like on the other side of the world. And mm. so they, they, uh, 
they they were playing when I was asleep. So I was like, oh no, I I can't I can't afford to lose my spot. So mm-hmm. that's when I kind of like uh, resolved to just playing like a like um through through the night. Um, uh, one of my uh <laughs> oh my gosh, I I I do want to thank like my my friend group and my 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 roommates uh, in my Airbnb for being just so patient with me as I was just like <laughs> and, and as I was just like stand um I was like um I would just like uh there was like this like uh kind of like a kitchen counter and I would just like I would just like be playing <laughs> and like whenever I would like feel a little tired I would just like go. I would just like uh uh I would just like stop playing for a bit and I had like an alarm on my phone and I, I just like sleep for like 10 15 minute intervals and then get right back to it. <laughs> mm. Wow, that's that's yeah. that's something. That's something too. It's uh it's not easy, right? Tearing is certainly not easy. I definitely I think for you this may have been the first time you've done anything of that sort, right? Like staying up for that long just to play, like play the same game over and over again. I imagine maybe you even haven't done like a stream like that before. So that might have been <laughs> a bit of a challenge to 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 kind of adapt, especially when, you know, you had to do it for almost 13 days straight. Yeah, it, it definitely wasn't easy, especially since I didn't have um the support of a dedicated tearing server behind me mm-hmm. i would um if if i wasn't playing on my if i wasn't uh or if i wasn't playing with a, a couple of my community members uh it would just be me doing um just like um doing um like just doing uh tearing in like public rooms mm-hmm. and it, it was just it was um it was a, a little challenging uh especially for um Especially when I would uh uh get a uh, get matched with like other players that um that kind of like know that you're tearing and it's like oh they're they they're they're tearing and they're go- just going to play um which I understand mm-hmm. um I kind of understand that kind of like concern it's like oh if you're tearing then you're just going to play the same song over and over and over again and that's no fun to like other people that want to play other songs so it's like um people just like drop from your room and that disbands the whole room and that's Mm -hmm. that's 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 time that you could have spent um playing the game and it's like i had to be a little um cautious with like my song selection too Mm -hmm. because um yeah i didn't want to give people the impression that i would just be playing like you know the songs that everyone everyone uh, chooses like I, I i didn't want to be i didn't want to be like oh this is just the person that's just gonna play uh, just gonna um that's just gonna uh request savior of song the whole t- like <laughs> like every single every single game mm-hmm yeah yeah well uh, again regardless of what happened right again you had a community to support you of course you know you had a group of friends and that's all you really need you need to have a a couple people to kind of support you throughout the journey and you know as long as you play as much as you can um you're able to get that goal and too i think in general though like when you're on stream and you know people are tuning to your stream even your competitors they were tuning on to your stream they did mention that you know despite the fact that you know it, it, what you shared today you shared some you know vulnerabilities maybe you had some doubts about the the the, the journey and some challenges you you manage to stay positive when, whenever you're uh, you're you're, you're tearing and and streaming at the same time you know everything seems to go well and you're always seem very motivated to get to the goal and i think that really definitely pushed you to to ultimately get that goal so um yeah again a big congratulations to you there and i'm sure that again um you know uh, your, your your streams and such were very very inspiring for a lot of people so i hope that again that's something that uh, you you found that to be very very uh i guess fruitful and uh, of experience yeah uh de- definitely i i do want to say like um i do want to say that this um like my my uh my my t9 and, and title idol definitely would not be possible without um the the support of uh of uh my community uh the suit crew everyone that comes in and watches and and fills rooms and kind of um and uh taught me kind of like um pointers on like um you know kind of what songs to to pick that were like um part of like the um 
uh, the soft meta uh, mm-hmm. in, in terms of songs so that um, less people would would feel inclined to 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 drop and so that was that was really helpful i was actually um it's it's so funny because um i when when i uh learned kind of like the tiering process um i uh, actually did um watch um a couple of uh, your videos and a couple of uh, your, your 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 especially like your 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 tiering uh your your guide to tiering servers and i was like oh this is uh i was like i i i i could I I could um I I was like learning um just like kind of like what it took to to tear and so mm-hmm. yeah I I I'm extremely grateful to um I, I'm extremely gla- grateful uh uh for you Phil and your and your videos and your content and just kind of like um um you know kind of like uh um sharing kind of like what it takes to tear and so yeah wow. I um. I'm really happy about that. I, I did not schedule that compliment uh, in the episode, but uh, uh, honestly, though, it's great to hear that what I've done has also uh, helped you contribute uh, to you as well to, to get your, your your tiering achievement. So again, I, I'm really happy to hear that as well, too. And I, I also want to give, uh, you know, minor shout outs as well, I believe. Um, the sinner sir smiley who i always want to say like every time someone who's recently uh who has been on the on the podcast before i always say that they were a podcast guest uh, i believe sinner star also helped you in in many aspects as well and um i'm sure that again he and many other people in the community uh, you have a lot to thank so again big congrats on your your title idol uh achievements it's uh, it's great to hear from from you about that experience yeah, good. So uh, before we wrap up, I just want to talk one more pr- pr- brief topic, and I think it's a more of a you know another fun topic. It's the fact that uh, conventions are also a thing that you are very passionate about. You've already mentioned your uh, your trip to Ala during Tidal Idol, but um, you know. When you go to conventions, right, you get to meet with people. You maybe get to, to interact with people who are of similar interests as well, right, who are also uh, in idol culture and such. Uh, Sue, so I think one thing you do also quite often, or maybe you do at, at certain points, is, you know, you're like a, a photographer. You take uh, photos for, for photo shoots, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, one of the other things that I um, do as well. Um mm-hmm. I, I I love uh, photography, and I, I love um, just um, just taking a, a photography of um, just like uh, people in cosplay, because like I really really admire just kind of like the just like the the uh, the amount of work it takes to um, to like um, number one to just like be in cosplay, but to mm. like go to conventions in cosplay because. Um, I, I I it's and especially when um especially when you can tell that um someone's put a lot of uh, time and effort into um uh making their cosplay and even just like um having like the 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 props and and such and uh mm-hmm. that's uh something that I appreciate a lot and I I really do um it's it's for me uh cosplay uh is at its best when it kind of it it looks like that 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 character was taken like or, or the the person the the uh, character that that person is cosplaying uh was taken like right out of their world and it's like kind of like it's like they're it's like they're in the real world and it's like mm-hmm. um uh, and it's like that's what i enjoyed doing in fact that's what i um wanted to do um that that's what i that's what i wanted to do um right before you know uh 2019 and mm. uh kind of the whole world kind of shut down yep. and uh yeah there weren't um any conventions for a while and mm-hmm. so i was like dang um i have this thing that i wanted to do that i couldn't do anymore because there were no conventions and um um yeah um i i do want to say that that's you know um just just doing just uh wanting having something that i wanted to to do but i couldn't because of you know um um uh, uh just kind of like those circumstances kind of let me yeah. um to streaming but um mm-hmm. now that we're in um now that we're um kind of in a in a better we're um we're kind of in a little 
bit better of a situation now um you know we're we're still kind of um we're we're still kind of dealing with the ramifications of 2019 Mm -hmm. but it's um you know it's it's a little it it, it's 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 um it's uh a little safer to just kind of like attend conventions and stuff Mm -hmm. like that and it's um really uh it's really nice to get to get back to doing like a uh, photography and like getting getting back to your hobbies and like going mm-hmm. to conventions and like beating people and stuff like that it's yeah. like especially since um especially since uh, um a lot of people that i've met um just like um over the internet especially um especially um getting to meet the people that um i um that um I worked with um during um idolcon which was like which which is is an online which was an online um discord um based convention uh regarding mm-hmm. idol culture uh being able to like meet those people in real life was like uh pretty pretty amazing and it's mm-hmm. like now that um now that a uh, real life conventions or um now that it's uh, a little safer to have um conventions like kind of like um outside of virtual space now it's um mm-hmm. it's really um it's really exciting for sure for sure it's honestly quite neat to hear i was just gonna you know and mention about the fact that yeah like you know conventions were a, a big part of uh many of our lives right when it was just to kind of enjoy the social aspect in your case is to you know take photography and such for us then the world ended uh, with the pandemic and all that which you know it, it, it paused on a bunch of things but as you mentioned uh, kind of led to you doing some streaming and also found a, a, a new hobby there which is quite cool um, and you know still be able to interact but ultimately uh real life interaction is is definitely uh i would say the the most beneficial something that you uh, is in most enjoyable and it sounds like again with your ex- recent experiences at ala you when when we're back into sort of a a new normal right we have a ala uh, i think you went to ax earlier this year as well and took some photos there as well yeah i i also um i also was able to attend anime expo and um i was um and I was also um that was also a big opportunity for me because um mm-hmm. I got to do um the photography uh for the uh, Love Live meetup that we had because mm-hmm. um uh my friend group and and I were um uh, coordinating the the Love Live uh, cosplay um meetup event and it was mm-hmm. so it was so nice getting to to do that uh, uh um to do that again. Of course there was also a um there was also a um a love live uh cosplay meetup at uh ala um mm. but um to get to um to 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 get to help kind of like uh put that together and like take photography for it mm. especially for um a convention with the scale of anime expo which is like um um one of the largest if not the largest uh, mm. convention um anime conventions on the west coast it's it, it's just it's so amazing to see mm-hmm. like um the amount of people that like um that uh came through and and showed up and they had um you know they their their um you know just like their passion and their cosplay was amazing and it's just like yeah i i really i really missed kind of like that 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 social experience that was For like sure. the thing that was like a missing missing kind of like in in my life for for like that that moment and i'm sure that this this was like the same for everyone else that was there Definitely. too it's just like just being there just hanging out taking pictures talking about your interests that's 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 what i like what well, was it overwhelming when you went to ax for the first time in like years and it's like oh yeah this is like i this is social interaction <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah i mean attending smaller cons here and there sort of like eased me back into it fair, but fair. like just um you know uh anime expo has this reputation of just being line con and just like all these uh you just have like everyone just kind of like um walking through the convention and that that kind of like um you know especially since we're we're still uh like i alluded to we're still kind of um we're still kind of dealing with the 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 lingering ramifications of the pandemic so it's like um it's 
it's like uh, you have to be a little well for me i i had to be a little bit more mindful of my own personal space Mm -hmm. um and just kind of um just kind of think about like you know just like um being 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 together in such like a large group and a large convention like that Mm -hmm. even like um even uh post pandemic there were still um a lot of people that were attending and uh Mm -hmm. yeah it was a little nerve-wracking at first but um i just um got um I, I got used to it. I, I mm. um, kind of knew where where my where my boundaries were, but um, as soon as I kind of discovered that, I was able to enjoy myself again at um, at such sure. like a large scale convention, especially for uh, especially for a convention like Anime Expo. Definitely, definitely, and that's great to hear too. Again, myself personally, I, I you know, I I also attended a con earlier this year it was Sakura Con in Seattle. It was pretty overwhelming at first as well with so many people, but yeah, it did remind me of how fun it was. And I'm actually going to another convention uh, this coming weekend. Uh, by the time you guys are listening to this uh, podcast, maybe on uh, your favorite podcast platform, um, the, the convention has probably already passed. It's Anime Revolution in Vancouver. Um, I also do plan to have a uh, meetup this time specifically for Boundary, but also uh, there were some people with you know who had Project Zekai interest and and say that they want to join as well. So uh, you know, hopefully, I'll be able to meet some people there as well, um, and it's going to be uh, hopefully a fun time, and it's good to be able to kind of at least kind of get back to the the, the swing of things with uh, with con life. Um, speaking of cons, I know there's one other thing that uh, where I think the both of us are pretty excited to talk about, uh, which is the upcoming convention in Seattle um, in uh, October. Uh, too, why don't you uh, give us a little bit of context of what's going on? <laughs> well, yeah, so um, I do want to say that um, um, I do want to say um, uh, the both of us are are really excited for uh, another um, idol idol convention in Seattle. Um, that's going to be uh, from October twenty first to uh, the twenty fourth, and that is going to be uh, Northwest Idol Fest. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, that's that that's that's really going to be exciting because, um, especially since um, this is um, th- this is like a this is like a convention but that's like about kind of like idol culture because mm-hmm. um and um especially since with the um especially since with like larger um anime conventions there's not a whole lot of kind of like a um dedicated uh uh i, I there's not really kind of like a dedicated uh thing for uh space for like just idol just idols uh, mm-hmm. Usually that's kind of like relegated to like the the background or something like that. But it's mm-hmm. gonna be it's going to be really exciting to just have this uh convention that's that's like um where idols is like like the main focus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Northwest Idol Fest. Uh, it's gonna be located in Seattle, October twenty first. Uh, that's I think the Friday. I think all all the way to it's a three day convention. Um. And we have a special guest, uh, Tu Tu and myself. We are staff members of this convention. So uh, we we do look forward to hopefully welcoming some individuals and some guests over. We do have some special guests uh, joining, including uh, previous podcast guests. I always want to say that. Previous podcast guests and also uh, amazing content creator Rin Taicho. Uh, They will be joining uh, as well as our favorite Bushiroad PR manager, uh, Lucia Hunter as well as uh, Kaho Shibuya, uh, as well as Phoebe, returning guests. So a lot of really cool guests. Uh, again, check the description below if you want to learn more about um, the Northwest Idol Fest. Maybe we'll see you there in person. Uh, I'm sure either Sue or myself would be really excited to to meet some of uh, you all uh, in person in this really, um, really excellent uh, idol convention, you know, specifically for idol culture. So we look forward to hopefully seeing you all there. Yeah, hmm. definitely. It's going to be it it's uh going to be nice um just going there and just like kind of like uh, helping out the event and then, yeah, hopefully uh hopefully uh you'll you'll be able to to come by and uh and yeah. yeah. Say I, hi. 
I, I hope to do a uh, an uh, like an actual um, you know I, I, there's a few plans in the works again this is still tentative but I do hope to have a combo contest there so like Gorilla Bash but like in person so that's gonna be like a really I guess different experience I'm not sure how that's gonna work but we'll see how it goes I'm also probably gonna do a, an in real life podcast with our special guests uh, most likely Ren Taicho I'll probably bring them back uh, as well as uh, Lucia Hunter for sure I will definitely try my best to maybe do a podcast episode with him so uh definitely look forward to see you there so northwest idol fest uh, october 21st uh mark your calendars down and hope to see you there all right so um Sue, thank you so much for taking the time to join this uh the st- uh, studio today uh, just before we wrap up i do ask a studio question to all of our uh members as well as to our special guests after uh, every episode where i ask a question and you know, a fun discussion where we just get to discuss um this particular question here so i would like to ask this question to our live viewers who are listening right now uh if they want to contribute of course if you're listening on our on a podcast platform feel free to contribute as well comments uh but sue i also want to ask you this question and the studio question is uh, if you had the chance to spend a day with one bushy road staff member or say you who's part of the uh you know franchise uh who would it be with um i don't oh. know this might be a pretty easy answer maybe a difficult answer <laughs> yeah i i would say kind of uh without a doubt if um uh, if I had the chance to spend the day with like someone with like a like either Bushiroad staff member or like a Seiyu connected to like Bushiroad, it would definitely be um, <clears throat> it, it would definitely be a uh, uh, Amita. It would definitely be a uh, Ame Ami Maishima. So it's just mm. like you know her. Um, obviously, she's like the voice of um, <laughs> she's obviously the voice of Aya, but she's also the uh, she's also the the voice of uh, Ibuki from a. Uh, uh, d4 dj um mm. you know who's part of the group of photon maiden too mm-hmm. and it's like um i really also uh enjoy um just like watching uh because she's got her own uh youtube channel too and she also um she also makes her own like video content and stuff like that and it's just like uh really um interesting too and so yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that's um that's definitely um the that's definitely like the the person that i are uh, you know the person that i uh would want to spend the day with if i had the chance yeah for sure for sure and we have some answers in the chat in the live stream as well the live chat um you know some pretty interesting answers uh, uh natsumi hirajima Ayane Sakura, of course, very uh, iconic uh, voice actress. Uh, myself, I think i would have to agree with you too i think it would have to be my shima ami um you know I've met a lot of the uh, other Seiyus in person already at uh, Kara Expo way back in 2019. I saw Roselia live. I saw Ras live. I saw uh, two fifths of Pop and Party. So you know, I you know, I, I, I it's great to see them, but I have not seen my Shima Ami in person before. So I would love to meet her in person. A little bit of a selfish, maybe <laughs> selfish uh, wish, but you know. Uh, it's funny because me and, and my Shima Ami, our birthdays are technically like a day apart. But like if it was if you think about time zone differences, like <laughs> they were technically the same birthday. So, um, you know, that'd be a pretty fun, fun time. But, um, you know, uh, just to spend, you know, just a fun day, just kind of chilling. Right. Um, uh, I think that would be a, a really fun time. So I, I think my Shima Ami would probably be my answer. Um uh, as well and of course feel free to contribute uh, your answers in the comments below or of course our live viewers as well uh, feel free to do that um yeah I, I imagine there would be at least someone who'd probably say kidani but uh i don't think i would spend my time with kidani <laughs> i'm sorry buddy <laughs> but um anyway um that will wrap up today's episode so again thank you all so much for taking the time uh, to listen and to thank you for joining the studio once more it was a great pleasure having you here uh, do you have any last words or uh, that you would like to share uh, to our viewers uh i i just want to say um just like a just like a couple things um i do want to say that you know um you know um kind of like um I, I, I guess um, uh, 
<laughs> Sorry, uh, I, I still have like a lot of things that I no, do. No, no worries. And, and I'm <laughs> Just to, like, collect your thoughts for sure. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a conclusion. We gotta, we gotta end it off strong, eh? Yeah, exactly. Um, definitely. Um, if you if you have like a, a dream, and if you if you have like something that you're interested in, and um, if you feel like uh, if you feel like uh, other people would want to be in would want to be uh interested in what you're interested in uh, i would say like just just go out there just like start start like um start making videos start making content start sharing the things that you like um and hopefully um other people will uh catch on and kind of like um enjoy what um enjoy um enjoy what um content that you watch and maybe they'll tell their friends and they'll tell their friends and uh mm -hmm. yeah it's just um yeah um just uh yeah just like whatever you have set in mind just like uh go for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely definitely i think there's a lyric in uh in title idol that basically describes what what exactly you said so i think that's pretty fitting for sure so um, yeah, again, uh, thank you too again for your inspiring words, um, as well as for, for being a guest in our, our podcast today. And as again, for our, our listeners out there, don't forget to check out the Refill Studio and all of your favorite podcast platforms YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. And of course, feel free to join the Unga Academy Discord server. That's where all our live listeners are, are, are right now, and also where you can interact with special guests and contribute to the studio question like we just did. Uh, today. So until next time, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you get your cans ready for the next set. So until then, we'll see you next time. Take care and bye bye. <laughs>